guys. <laughs> Welcome back. It's okay, so it's 9:15 p.m. my time here in Shenzhen and it is 8:15 a.m. New York City time. 15 minutes to go today on December 7th for the NFP and we've have a a a complete full room. Ni hao, Jerry. We have a full room right now. Um and uh we just had some technical difficulties so we're starting 15 minutes late. Now uh, conference room members, um, are you guys all here from Forex Watchers? Okay, yes, yes, okay, good. All right, now let's get this analysis started. We have 15 minutes to go onto this thing. No rush, take your time. We're gonna do this nice and slowly, no panic, nothing. All right, we're gonna start with Euro USD. What do we know about Euro USD? What do we do first? Tell me that. Daily chart, okay, let's take a look at the daily charts. There we go daily chart okay what do we know from the daily chart from yesterday's candle this is a current this is a current candle that's running yesterday's candle what does that tell us it tells us it is short okay it's a heavy short okay remember this is one of the biggest candles of the month that we have so far which means the tails that it generates gives us a story the tail is not too big indicating that the next candle is going to surpass it. Have we done the surpassing? Have we respected the previous candle? Okay, yes. So it's telling us it wants to short and it's already surpassed it. Okay, so we don't know if it's going to continue further or not. All we know is it's short and it's already done its surpassing. Now, let's go on to pound. What do we know about pound? Daily chart. Same thing. Okay, we have a short. We have no idea if it will continue short. All we know is that it is short and it has gone short. Will it continue further? Okay, now moving on. CAD, what do we know about? CAD. Do we have any information on CAD? Okay, range. Okay, Kang and Tech also correct. Um, no information there. Okay, is the sound off? Let me reset the sound one time just to fix it for everyone. One second. Who did not have sound should have sound now. Okay, is sound working for everybody? Why for a yes? Excellent, excellent. All right, so let's let's uh, continue. All right, now U.S. dollar CAD. No information here. Okay, all we know it's in a range bound currently right now. It has a nice range coming in from last month. All right, going to Swiss franc daily charts. What do we have from yesterday's candle? What do we know from this? Long, okay, we have a long. Now, what about respecting the previous candle? Have we done that? Okay, Joseph says, same as Euro. Long but met, says Joginder. That is correct, so it's a long. We don't know if it's going to continue long or not based on what we see. Okay, Remember, anything we do in the Forex market has to be based on what you see, not what you hear. What you hear can be false, but what you see can never be false. Remember that concept. All right, Aussie dollar. What do we have on the daily chart?
long and not met. Okay, here we go. We have a indication for a long and the long has not been met yet. We have not surpassed the previous candle or at least even reached the tip of the tail. We haven't even gone past the, the close. So this is a long and it's pending. We have a long indication on Aussie dollar. Let's take a look at New Zealand dollar. What do we have on the daily charts? What does this tell you on the daily chart? Same thing, long and it's still pending. We still have to go long. We haven't gone yet. It's still pending. Okay, what about Euro Yen? What do we know about Euro Yen on the daily chart? Compared to yesterday's candle, very big candle, telling you it's short. Has it gone short? Yes, it's already gone short. So it's telling you short and it's already gone short. So we don't know if it's going to continue short or not. So as of right now, the only information we have is Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar is pending for its long. Now, today's scenario is a little bit weird. Usually you'll have tons of pendings. Okay, one day before the NFP, you'll have lots of movements. A lot of uh, a lot of the times, you'll have the biggest candles of the month um, so far, and it gives you a nice clear direction. Now, today's scenario gives you a nice clear direction on Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar. Technically, we should just go long. However, New Zealand dollar for the last three days has been going long. Euro USD the last three days has not been going long, has been going short, anti-correlation. Okay, so a bit of caution there. Let's take a look at today. Let's go on to one hour and let's get an idea. The currently the candles are going short on Euro USD, right? Let's take a look at New Zealand dollar on the one hour. Okay, markets are extremely sidelined, which means it's having a hesitation to continue short with the rest of the markets. It's holding and now it's pushing north. Okay, so because we have this anti-correlation movement, usually we pick out our direction. We're like, okay, this is where we're going and it's done. And we're always, uh, we're usually always correct. And in fact, we're always correct. Now, in this particular scenario, we have a different case. There are po three possible outcomes from this. Okay, conference room members, what are the three possible outcomes you can get from this? What can possibly happen in the market? Okay, conference room members are all the guys in yellow um, in the room. Okay, scenario one, pairs follow Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar. Okay, so let's say Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar continues north. Everything else follows it. That's scenario number one. Scenario number two. Okay, Sunshine says, uh, go short from here. Everything just drops short and uh, Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar never follow and never respect the previous candle. It just continues to fall short. What is scenario number three? Okay, scenario number three is what Abhinav is saying. Saying, Aussie dollar goes long and then continues short with everyone else. Now, during the NFP, we might have a, have a spike that goes up, respects the previous candle, and then continues short for the rest of the day in respect with all the other pairs to get back into correlation. That could be another possibility. Okay, which which scenario is the least possible? We're gonna do. We're gonna have to do it this way now. You have to pick out your odds now, because we don't have a clear answer. We're gonna have to pick out our odds. Which is the least possible? go short directly okay that one seems the least possible where we do not actually respect Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar and the markets just drop continue to drop on all the pairs okay that is a scenario that uh, does not work okay it's the least possible scenario that we're assuming okay that gives us two scenarios remaining one 
is the markets continue long because Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar is still pending. Okay. Do we have any indications for a long on euro or pound or anything? Nothing really so far. Okay. And then the next scenario was that we do go long, but as a short spike from the NFP, but then we continue short for the rest of the day. Okay. Now, what scenario do you guys think it could possibly be between everybody? Everyone can participate in this one. What scenario mm -hmm. do you think is possible? Do we go long and then we're going short or are we headed long for the day? Go up and then down. Long then short. Okay. There is that scenario. Now, we also have the situation where Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar can actually go long while the other pairs do not go long because they have been in anti-correlation lately. Okay. Why have they been in anti-correlation? It's due to, um, it's not a US dollar movement. Okay. Long and then short. Okay, initial short, then long. Okay, now what what information do we know from the past? Let's say the markets do go uh, long or short. What information do we know? After after the NFP is out, what do we know? Okay, mm, Stacey will continue for the session. Yes, Joseph, that is correct. Now, and Martin, that is also correct. What happens is once the NFP settles down, that is your direction for the rest of the day. It takes approximately 45 minutes, maybe into an hour for the NFP to settle. Because a lot of the gamblers come in and they trade. They might even come in a little bit later mm. to see, okay, maybe I'm going to get in on it. And then, and then they settle. So... Uh, once the market settles down, it picks a direction 95% of the time. It picks that direction for the rest of the day. Okay, and you'll see if you're in that direction, you'll add in additional 200, 300 pips into your uh, uh, trading batch. So, in this particular case, now, I see Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar. So, first things first, this trade is a risk. I'm going to tell you that right now because we don't have a clear answer. Second thing, we have anti-correlation. Third thing, if you are conservative, but you still want to get in on the action, if you have that itch to trade, no problem. Wait for the NFP to settle. Once the NFP is settled, you have your direction. You can wait for a small retracement and take the direction. Okay? So as of right now, I'm going to go ahead and take my trades into a long. Okay? Now, NFP, uh, I'm sorry, um, Aussie dollar on the one hour chart. Let's take a look. All right, I'm going to go long on Euro USD. I'm going to go long on all my pairs. I'm going long on, okay, this is not going to execute for me on time. All right, long on uh, pound. I'm going with the scenario that uh, the markets respect Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar. I'm going short on CAD and Swiss franc as they are correlating. Long Aussie and New Zealand. And long, finally, Euro Yen. This is the only information we know technically is Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar have not met their previous candles respect. You know, they have not respected the previous candles. Okay? So, one minute to news release. Remember, for those of you who are conservative, that's fine. You can wait till the news is finished. Find out where the NFP has settled to, and you can choose that direction for the rest of the day. Okay, let me open up the PNL so you guys can see the fluctuation. Oh, sorry. Okay, currently running at the 33 pips in profit. It does not mean it's going to be in profit this whole time. You don't know how the NFP goes fluctuating. 
Okay. Remember, even today, even at any time, since any any time we've done the NFP, we've never watched the news. We do it based on what we see on the screen. In today's case, all we know is information from Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar. So it's a little bit uh, caution. Okay. US dollar Japanese yen went up like crazy. Okay. Alright, now there's a strong level here. Will it break? I want to see that. Let me clean this up a little bit. Uh, yes, Rod. Had dropped. Okay. Now here's another thing. Here's another scenario. Now take a look at the size of the candle on CAD. How big is the previous candle? It's very small, right? Okay, the current can, uh, US dollar CAD candle is extremely large. Previous candle is so small. Now, for us to turn around and go north, how far does the current candle need to retrace to? How do we know if it's going to be an exhaustion? to your entry at least. Very good skip. Basically your close of this particular candle has to go all the way up into this area to close within the previous candle to give you a proper exhaustion or a trend continuation for a long. Now a chances for something like that happening are slim because of how big this candle is. Even if the candle closes here wherever this yellow line is anywhere from here all the way down is what we call a trend continuation pattern. The markets are going to continue short even into the next hour. Okay, let's take a look at pound. We have a short on pound currently in place. Euro USD also has a short. Aussie dollar is still a short. New Zealand dollar trying to push north. Remember, mixed sentiments all over the place. We're still in slight profit due to some of the pairs, especially Euro Yen and CAD. Excuse me. These are the pairs that are pushing. Okay. Euro Euro Yen also very big candle. CAD very big candle. All the other pairs who are not following along has a very small candle. How how easy is it for Euro USD to turn around and go north? Okay, very easy because it's near the previous candle. Okay, it's not far away from it. it's near the previous candle, so it's not a problem for you know pound or euro USD um, or even Swiss franc. Swiss franc, all Swiss franc has to do is go slightly lower into our entry area, and there you have it. You have an exhaustion. Okay, Aussie dollar pushing and pushing and pushing. New Zealand dollar now pushing pushing a little bit harder. Euro yen still looking good. 
Remember, this is only five minutes into the NFP. Even though we're in profit, does not mean we're still in profit yet. NFP starts at 8.30 a.m. New York City time. 15 minutes before the gamblers get in. They're like, okay, I'm going to place my orders because otherwise the broker will not fill in my trades. They place orders thinking that this is where I want to go. Once the market moves, people jump in on the trade even more, anticipating they're going to continue with that direction. Then the market actually swings to take these gamblers out. During this whole process, they're still entering until the money is completely wiped out. Okay? These players coming in, they're trying to scalp from this thing. They're trying to enter. Then they get burned. Then they enter again. Burned. Then they enter the opposite way. Burned. <laughs> yes, Nelson, thanks. Um, let me put the charger in. So, okay, thanks. All right, so by the time they're done exhausting um, uh, their funds going in and out, in and out, and then the larger players and the banks and the hedge funds, they start seeing that there is not much orders for us to take anymore. Then they settle down and then the market resumes. Okay, so what, what did the data actually say on the news? Is it good for US dollar or bad for US dollar? Okay, good for US dollar, right? Okay, so Euro Yen is currently flying high US dollar CAD, US dollar is getting weaker against the CAD. Okay, extremely, not even by a little bit, extremely. You know, if this is good news for the US dollar, why is CAD uh, why is CAD suddenly getting so strong against the dollar? What did CAD have to do with this? Okay, remember, always trade what you see, not what you hear. Okay. Oh, George, you're welcome, and welcome to the room. In fact, uh, <laughs> even I had a hard time getting into this room today. Maybe we need to uh, announce it a little bit less on the, our social networks and just <laughs> just simply announce it on uh, Urban Forex. All right. As as we approach towards uh, 10 p.m. my time on uh, 9 a.m. New York City time, we'll start to understand where the market actually wants to settle and which pairs are actually correlating and not correlating. Oh, well, I'm I'm so sorry. One of you guys asked me about gold. Let's take a look at gold real quick. Okay, since gold is not correlating, uh, gold is expected to go short. There you go. Gold is short. Okay, welcome uh, Madhu Keshwar also, welcome. Okay, CAD data is very good also, okay. How far will EU go into long? Well, let's see. If EU actually picks uh, the direction to go long, uh, Euro USD, that's going to be the direction for the rest of the day. Gold is correlating with pound today, okay? But take a look at gold the last few days. On December 6th, gold goes sideways, then goes long. Take a look at Euro USD. Sideways, then short. They usually go together, Euro USD and gold. This time, opposite, okay? It, it went with uh, New Zealand dollar. It went sideways, then long. Okay, today's gold is up, then down. Euro-Yen up then down, but Euro-Yen is headed up, but gold is headed down. 
complete anti-correlation going on with gold. Okay, it is not working with uh, the rest of the pairs. Why? The one common thing in all of our pairs is U.S. dollar. The strength coming in today in the last 24 hours is not coming in from the U.S. dollar. That is not the main concern. So there, the Another currency is become the main concern. Whether it's on the news or it's inside the banks internally, U.S. dollar is not important at the, at the current moment. Something else is important. Why, what, when, who, I don't care. All I know is U.S. dollar is not the top dog today. This is the reason why we see anti-correlation. Okay. Uh, shouldn't we supposed to go short with Euro USD? Uh, you're talking about with gold. If gold goes short, Euro USD goes short that way. Okay. See now the trades are now pushing into negative. We went from 40, 50 pips into positive. Now we're down to negative 20. Yen is weakening, okay, possible uh, from psychological effects from the earthquake. Okay, remember one thing, everything that you see on the news and everything you see in the market from the news is psychological. It's not the decision of the big players. Major catastrophe in Japan or Hurricane Sandy. Bankers do not get up from their underwears and put on their shorts and be like, okay, sell $3 billion or buy $10 billion. No. They need to get authorization. That takes time. Uh, Joseph can't hear me. Let me one more time turn off the mic and turn it back on for those who can't hear me. Three earthquakes today, wow. Okay, uh, Joseph, hopefully you can hear me now. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, why for a yes, please? Okay, great. All right, so yeah, uh, so three earthquakes. Where where are the earthquakes? All in Japan? All three of them? Uh, Raj, sure. Ask uh, any question. Just ask me. Um, sure. Uh, should we stay long? As of right now, I'm still long. I'm gonna let the market settle. Let it do its thing. Even if it settles and I'm down 100 pips, 200 pips, that's fine. Let it settle. Let the dust settle. Okay, Jimmy, uh, Northern Japan. Okay. okay. Uh, Raj, why did we long your USD instead of short as showed on the chart? Okay, let's go over this really quick. Um, Euro USD on the daily chart, if you take a look, the previous candle is a strong short. Okay, this big candle for this short has this uh, gives us an indication that the market is going to continue short. How far short? It's going to go beyond the tail because the tail is small. Indicates there's more pressure coming in from the top. So we've surpassed the tail. So as far as today, we it says short, but it already has gone short. Will it continue short? We don't know. All we know is on New Zealand dollar, if you take a look at the daily, based on the previous candle, it says we're going to go north. But there is a 25% tail on that. That indicates the market is going to go up at least up to the tail or at least into the middle of the tail. That is still pending. We haven't done that yet. We need a push. So, basis on that, we're taking everything long.
Aussie dollar and both New Zealand dollar have this scenario. Okay, remember large candles. Their tell their tails tell a tale. Joginder, I'm up to fifteen hundred pips from November fifteenth. Wow, very good, very good. Okay, you're welcome, Raj. All right, so now. We are currently down 30. CAD extremely short. No chance of CAD recovering as of right now. 14 minutes to go. Swiss Frank strongly long still, creating a tail up, tail down position. So caution there. Aussie dollar jumped back down again New Zealand dollar same situation jumped back down again it is now at the bottom of the range we've been hovering from the top to the bottom of the range all day today will we cross euro yen pushing down even if it closes here or even here it's still a long it's a trend continuation pattern for a long okay the only way this can continue short is if this goes massively all the way down very close to where we have entered. If it goes till there, then we have a possible trend continuation for a short. So then we're going with the trend. This big tail indicates there's a lot of pressure pushing it down. Okay. As of right now, running at 11 tips negative, still okay. Take a look at this. Even though Euro Yen is retracing, we're not too far into negative. That means the other pairs that are negative are not really moving much. Euro USD not moving much. Pound still there, just hovering around. Nine forty-seven p.m. my time. Eight. 47 a.m. New York City time. Okay, now, pop quiz. Pop quiz for all of you guys. Where do you think the market is headed? Okay. I've, we've done the analysis. We've done the prediction. Now, uh, a pop quiz for those of you guys who are in the room, new for the first time. Let's say the market continues long in our favor. And uh, it goes till here. Two hours later, we see the market up here. What do you do for the rest of the day? Stay long. Good, good, good. Okay. Once the market settles, that is the direction for the rest of the day um, on NFP days. Okay. Now, if the market continues short, and it goes down and it closes on uh, you know down here and it starts to settle down there what do you do um, what time can market roughly settle uh, Thomas take usually you can take a look at your PL you can understand by the speed of the movement of your PL to find out when there's less and less people active. Okay, skip, that is correct. You go short with the market. Um, pro, uh, continue short, yes. Okay, now next thing. During this entire process, guys, did at any one time any of us panic or freak out or you know jump into a buy or into a sell we've gone in profit and loss maybe four times already now okay do you see how you need to control your emotions and be very calm with this even though the market is fast you need to be calm you should not trade on moving data Stick to your analysis, do your analysis, stick to your analysis, and then just wait. If your analysis is wrong, accept it, it is wrong, take a hit.
move on. But don't try to rectify your analysis on the spot. That will do more damage. Uh, Chris, yes, it is like almost like having a hedge position at the current moment because of CAD and Euro Yen, yes. Okay, remember, whatever the reason may be, or whether CAD has a good news or, um, you know, the situation that's going on in Japan, we did not, I did not turn on the news, we did not uh, listen to the numbers, nothing. We made our decision before the NFP actually started. So... If you actually look at things, because all of these things are, are, you know, the NFP numbers, they, uh, you know, they have to be revised, they have to be, you know, filtered, and then once they're final, then they go out and make it public. Um, Murray, that that is absolutely correct. If you like, that's that's what we discussed earlier. If you are a conservative trader on days like these, wait for the initial NFP swing to finish. Once the market settles, pick that direction and stay for the rest of the day. That is a safer way to, to do it. Chris, uh, I would say we are short, right? Um, I wouldn't say that quite yet. Because CAD is extremely short and it's going to pull down Swiss franc because Aussie dollar is pushing back up. New Zealand dollar is bouncing off its bottom of its range once again. Euro yen is still long. We have to wait and see. We still don't know. Uh, Murray, this is evident of back study. Yes, it, it comes in from the past. I, I actually, I didn't study this myself. I was taught this. So I'm just passing on the information to you guys about this. That once the NFP settles, the market actually stays in that direction for the rest of the day. And uh, based on this information, I've tried it in the past. And it's worked every time for me. So I'm passing this information on to you guys. Okay. So when it set settles, will you re-enter? Very good question. Okay. Now, for advanced members, uh, uh, conference room members, what do I do? Conference room members, what do I do? Once the market settles, if it's in our direction, the way we've already chosen, what do we do? How do we... I come back on Monday and I know that, uh, you know, we're going to make profit and we have, let's say, uh, you know, 300, 400 pips on Monday, but I'm not happy with 400 pips. I want a thousand. How do I make it a thousand? Okay, James, correct. Martin, uh, Martin, correct, but where? Dennis also, that's correct, but where? Um, Shri, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Ahmed, in two hours? Mm, no, it's not time related. FX Sniper, I'd pull back to previous areas for it. Correct, FX Sniper. Okay, the moment we are long, here's how you do it. Let me let me explain to you guys. This is a little uh, advanced technique that uh, we're going to be going over for our conference room members next week. Um, what happens is, for example, take a look at this area. 
This is a very strong support resistance area for CAD right now. We've crossed way below it. One, one thing I want to tell you guys, whenever you have a strong support and resistance, don't think that the market never will cross it just because it's a resistance. You know, let's say this is a resistance here. The market bounced here and then it turned around. Can it break this resistance? And if yes, how? What is the factor to break this resistance? Raj says news. Simon, correct. Big candle, strongly. Okay, if you have a strong level of support and resistance, the only way to break it is through a big candle. A, a strength in the market can break that area. Now, we have a big candle here, right? A very big candle under currently. So let's take it in a reverse cycle, a reverse engineering method. Big candle here. We've broken through. That means several areas of support and resistance. One is here. There's another one here. So let's say the market stops here. Candle closes. Next candle opens up. We go north. Somewhere around this area. Okay, now CAD is currently in 38 pips of profit. Once it goes here, it might be in like 10 or 15 pips of profit. Somewhere in this area. Can I take a short there? Okay, the answer is yes. The reason why, because if the market closes here, from here to here is a small candle. Okay, it's not a big candle that's going to be breaking through. It's going to be a small candle that's going to have a hard time crossing through this area because there is some strong support resistance coming in from the past. That is your ideal area to add positions. And then there's a whole different ball game. Is once you add positions, your original positions, you can move it to break even or you can leave it. The second position that you enter, you, you can make the break even point as your stop. There are so many ways to do it, to actually make your profit bi um, bigger than your risk. Okay, and that's the that's the one time when you can uh, actually play with the laws of business, and you can have high, uh, low risk and high reward in this particular scenario. But that's only because the factor of price analysis is in your in your favor. Okay. Uh, Murray, you're in the conference room. Don't worry about it. You'll 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 learn the stuff uh, coming Monday. This Monday you'll learn it. Okay. We're currently at 50 pips. Um, someone said gold. Okay, gold big retracement. Okay. Only in gold I've, have I ever seen it like this. This is a massive move. But okay, that's good. That's good. It's helping us out. Okay, CAD is still strongly short. Pound is okay. Euro USD, nice exhaustion forming. Okay, looks like the market is getting ready to settle, right? Aussie dollar, nice exhaustion, trend continuation pattern. New Zealand dollar, same scenario, looking to cross. Will we cross? Once New Zealand dollar crosses, consider the dust settled. Euro yen, still long. Okay, things are looking good. Now you have a you have a decent direction. Trade's running at 65 pips. You're a happy camper. The dust is pretty much settled. Look at the speed of the market. We're running at 64 pips, 63. Okay, we're only going up a pip or two, but we have seven pairs running. Okay, uh, Abhishek Gold is still looking bearish. When is the next event, Dennis? Uh, I try to do events as much as possible. Unfortunately, I've been extremely busy lately, so I've been doing only NFP. Um, so I'm sorry for all of you Urban Forex members. I'm going to really, as soon as uh, the internship uh, recordings and all this stuff free up some time from me, I will come back and uh, do a lot more webinars with you guys, um, like I used to do, like almost weekly. So don't worry, um, we will be back for all of that stuff.
So I hope all of you guys at Urban Forks are enjoying your stay there. Everyone, I, I've been noticing there's a big uh, increase in a lot of people posting. They're contributing. Uh, they're sharing their analysis and helping other people out, which is excellent. That is the vision that I've had for Urban Forex to make sure people help each other out with uh, information that they have. So uh, this recording, um, I mean, it's already been recorded right now. It's uh, I just need to uh, do a quick edit because I have to put uh, the previous recording and this recording together. Um, and uh, we're going to put that all together and put it up online. Maybe Monday, let's say. Monday, Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. Just follow us on YouTube. Uh, it's youtube.com forward slash urban forex and you'll be able to get an alert whenever this video is available. Uh, Atush, Atushi, yes, um, there was, uh, the, the previous NFP is also on my hard drive. I, I have it available. Unfortunately, the whole video has no audio because I didn't have, remember how we have two accounts today? I didn't have that at that time and we missed out on the audio and so it's really tough for me to go back and re-explain whatever I possibly said. But uh, we also on that day, we, we, we uh, took the trades, we went up all the way for several hundred pips also on that day. So. Okay, hope today was very insightful for all of you guys. Uh, Selig, yes, the market stays long. As of right now, it looks like it's going to stay long. It looks like the dust has settled. Tell you what, I'm going to leave these trades running. And uh, for those of you who whoever want, um, on Urban Forex, just check with me on Monday and ask me for uh, if I have a snapshot of these trades. And maybe I'll, I'll post the NFP picture on, uh, on Urban Forex for you guys. Uh, Chris, um, I, I do not use stop losses at all. And uh, actually one of my videos will explain that, like pro trading strategy will explain why I don't use stop losses and how I use money management to use as a substitute to a stop loss. Okay, uh, Dennis, uh, if the market settle down, they will continue to Monday. And then Monday you can close out your trades. Uh, Kang, how to correctly draw the blue zone. The blue zone is something that uh, I have not shared yet. I mean, I'm still training people in the conference room to work with that. Um, it's just a massive amount of support and resistance. So it takes a little bit of training to understand that. Like I said, I still haven't seen even my conference room members pick it up yet. But uh, it takes it takes some time. It's it's nothing but support and resistance. That's all. Uh, thank you, sunshine. Thank you. Okay. I hope you guys have all uh, enjoyed it. Um, we one more announcement I have is that the Forex Watchers Conference Room is ending. Now, um, by the end of December, the conference room will end and the training will stop. All the training recordings that I have done will be available to all members on Forex Watchers. So those of you who want to join can take advantage of joining now because um, I think, I believe in January, the prices will rise once again, as far as I've heard. But uh, um, contact me or contact Samira if you guys wanna you know, ask if there's coupons or discounts available. Uh, you can just simply go to forexwatchers.com and info at forexwatches.com is how you can get in touch with uh, Samira. She's very friendly. She'll help you out. And so, so what does a subscription, what does a subscription offer after January? Okay, post January, you have access to all the recordings. The next big thing we're doing um, is we're we're making interactive. Uh, what do you call it? Material. For example. I'm going to be recording all of this stuff, just the screen, okay? And once the screen is recorded, I'm going to actually place some trades. But once you do it on your end, on Forex Watchers, it's going to ask you, what would you do at this current moment? And you can actually click new order and sell 
and you'll see the cell in front of you live and so it's like it's like little tutorials to walk you through after training you it, it walks you through each exercise so that's going to be available available probably February that's going to take some time so that's a little bit more advanced when it comes to uh, creating stuff like that so that's going to be available so don't worry that all of our companies are are you know we're doing a lot of uh, implementing a lot of technology a lot of new things and new ways to teach new ways to um, share such as mobile devices and stuff like that so we're doing whatever we can to make learning as easy as possible Uh, Abhinav, yes, that's what I'm uh, seeing so far. Um, Murray, not a daily analysis live? As of right now, no. Um, I might take the analysis from December to mid-January at most because there are a lot of holidays coming up. So um, I will take it to mid-January. Uh, Marvin, what is the fees like with coupon? Um, I can tell you this. It is still expensive. I personally consider it expensive. But... Uh, it is more on the advanced side. I wouldn't recommend joining for anybody if they have not uh, do not have a basic understanding of at least pro trading strategy. If you can understand pro trading strategy just fine, you can join Forex Watchers. But if pro tr trading strategy doesn't make sense to you, then uh, may maybe you still need to go over some more Forex, forex education. So the advanced course and then Forex Watchers is the difference. Forex Watchers is the advanced course. Um, are you keeping this current trade open? Uh, Atsushi, yes, I am keeping it open. Uh, Raj, um, saying that Forex Watchers is the advanced course. Is CAD poised to reverse looking at 15 minutes? Um, so far, I don't see anything yet. Things are still looking okay. Not too bad. I'm waiting for um, a New Zealand dollar to give me a move. That's what's my concern. Everything else is okay. Uh, FX Sniper, what tool do you use to draw the blue zone? You can simply, wherever you have your arrows and lines and stuff, right click in this area, click customize, and if you go down, you will actually see this rectangle icon. Just click insert and the rectangle comes in. And then you have it right here, you just click the rectangle and you simply draw it. Okay. Skip, uh, where can I get the coupon? Simply email us, info at uh, uh, forexwatchers.com. There is a lady there named Samira. You can get in touch with her, or you can email me on, or you can uh, you can inbox message me on uh, Urban Forex and request it from me. I can uh, look it up for you and send it to you as well. Okay, Simon. Uh, okay, sorry, Peter. When you, oops, sorry, sorry. Let me Forex. Uh, skip. It's Forex Watchers with an S at the end of Watchers. I'll type it in for you. Let me go over the questions now. One second. Let's go up. Oh, sorry. Okay. Peter, when you add extra positions, what targets do you take? Targets are going to be the same. We're going to exit on Monday. Okay. Simon, Naveen, do you know of email alerts for exhaustion candles when you do not have to keep MetaTrader open all the time? Um, as of right now, I don't know. Um, I'm sure that's something that may be possible. I, I actually don't know, Simon. I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, all I know is I've been quite amazed of what programming can be done on MetaTrader uh, with scripts and EAs. Um, but, oh, for those of you, I'm, I'm going to help out uh, a company. Um, for those of you who use iPhones and Android devices, get this application uh, as of right now called Oanda. You know, oh, and uh, let me type it for you. Okay. What, 
in this application they have uh, a section that says price alert you know you can set it up that it can alert you when a certain price is reached to my understanding that is a very important tool when it comes to trading at least in advanced methods um, uh, you know I recommend using this tool um, the urban forex app is being created this is going to be an option that's going to be available in there but as of right now I do not mind telling you know giving out information about a third party company so go ahead and download it it's, it's a nice company they're very good um, and you can use it there very useful all right uh, okay what else was there Jason Jackson um, hey Naveen um, don't mind the question should we be worried about this one world currency thing um, I have not heard about that Jackson I mean, it can also be because I, I don't follow news practically at all I do not watch news at all to avoid me getting confused with what I see Chris Naveen may I ask you you are using uh, crossover or VMware with your Mac I'm currently using VMware I used to use crossover but uh, I think VMware is much easier okay you're very nice Naveen I didn't have hope for the market to go long um, you surprised me thank you Yo, you're welcome could you see gold please yes Kasim let's take a look at gold Okay, gold is expected long. Don't worry about anything else. Gold is going long, Kasim. All right, uh, Natalie, will you do seminar next year? Of course, next year, most likely once Forex Watchers is more um, based on recordings and stuff like that, I'm going to be doing seminars in person. Um, there's going to be a lot of webinars, of course, but I'm going to actually be going around the world doing seminars in person. Of course, we will implement the same style of pricing where we try to make it as affordable as possible for everyone we're not going to go around and be like okay five thousand dollars for a three-hour course no no nothing like that so um okay thanks just the exhaustion alert on urban forex is great too okay so I, I didn't even know there was an alert for it so that's great so it looks like you guys are working with each other on the community for that um, Prince uh, would like to share alertfx.com. It alerts you via email of prices reached of many. Yes, alertfx is also a good one. Um, do you use fib trend lines, pivots to find out all these for the blue zone? Yes, Kang, I do. I do. Okay, as of right now, Kang, um, my interns usually do all of them for me. They send them to me every morning and then I have to edit them just to see if there's any mistakes. Usually I do a few edits per day, but. Uh, Sometimes they're good. So it's not that difficult to learn. It's just tons of support and resistance. That's all. Okay. Um, uh, Prince, Jackson is referring to New World Order, the conspiracy theory, one world government, and currency. It's scary, but I guess we would still be able to trade commodities. Yeah, whatever you learn in how we trade, it can be applied anywhere because it's based on price action it's based on how the market flows okay so not to worry about that and one world currency and all that stuff it's it's a little bit dangerous as of now and now nobody's gonna let go of the power that's how people are as far as I see it so that's gonna be a problem uh, Chris too will you come to Malaysia yes of course Malaysia is a very big market for us uh, most likely KL we'll see Please tell once again about Gold's view. Gold is headed long, Abhishek. Murray, how trustworthy are the exhaustion, exhaustion candles which appear following NFP? Uh, they're pretty good. If Just make sure the exhaustion candle is not the NFP candle itself on the currency pairs. Gold is fine because gold is a swinging trade. But if you have an exhaustion candle on the NFP candle on a currency pair, be a little caution on there. Skip, when are you coming to the States? Um, I do not know yet. Um, maybe maybe next year we'll start from the East Coast and then move into the West Coast. We'll, we'll see. I'm particularly from D.C. myself, um, family towards Chicago, so I will be coming towards that area um, sooner than later. Uh, Chris, how about your FIBS webinar? <laughs> Chris, yes. A FIBS webinar is still pending. I owe you a FIBS webinar. So hopefully as time frees up, I will try that. 
Uh, Naveen, what did you say about gold? Gold will go long. I hope the audio is fine. Will you come to the US, Paola? Yes, I will come to the US. And Chris, yes, I will try to do it soon. Uh, Sulik, exhaustion candle on US dollar Swiss franc before? No, this is not an exhaustion candle on the previous candle on US dollar Swiss franc. When you do forecast, do you first draw Fibonacci based on price uh, daily candles? Yes, we do. Uh, we do use the daily candle with the fibs. Okay, gold right now. Good. London. Yes, I will come to London also. Raj, short from one seven zero five to one seven zero eight. Naveen, how is the advanced course conducted through webinar? The advanced course is conducted like the way we are doing it right now. It's pretty much three hours per day like this, non-stop. I got the email and uh, could not register. Oh, I think you're referring to the internship. The internship is different. That is uh, um, basic and intermediate only. Kang, how to join the conference room? Kang, you can go to forexwatchers.com. I can type it for you here. Okay. Oh, wait, whoa, there's a lot of questions. Um, regarding my FIBS webinar, my popcorn is so old, <laughs> will kill my teeth. Yes, I, I, I will get to your Fibonacci webinar very soon. I'm so sorry. Uh, Shri, whenever I hear your analysis, I am being motivated big time. Good, good, good. And, and that's the goal. That's the goal to make sure everyone is excited to trade for it. And uh, I know Forex has become very like, risky for many of you guys and have let down a lot of you guys. But it's actually a lucrative market if done right. And I'm trying to bring that back to people. Is there a reason to leave out Euro Swiss franc and Euro, uh, Euro pound in the correlation section? They are good on the heat map. No reasons. As of right now, we're just focusing on the US dollar pairs. Once uh, you know people get used to all these pairs, we're going to add more pairs. That's a little bit of an advanced technique, actually, to add in more pairs. When is the next beginner's class? It should be another week's time, uh, if you're referring to uh, the internship. Week 1 and 2 is already released. Okay, how many days? I'm in Singapore and not sure for the timing. Um, Raj, can you uh, rephrase the question? How many days for what? Marvin Tay, um, I've just joined the internship program. Do you think it is advisable to join conference room and your internship at the same time? Um, it's totally up to you, actually, Marvin. You can... Um, as I am still in the, in the conference room in December for the remaining a month, maybe a month and a half, so you can probably take advantage of me being there live because post-January only you'll see my recordings. So you can probably take advantage of me being there live right now. Um, Raj, could you explain this so I can directly do advanced course? Is there someone I can contact to get details around this? Yes, Raj, you can get in touch with Forex Watchers. Info at forexwatchers.com. Um, Thomas, uh, how far can gold go up? Gold should be going up till Monday. For the internship, I sent in my assignment but wasn't confirmed about if my assignment was valid or not. Okay, um, I'll, I'll check with uh, uh, Augustine to see if uh, he can send everyone a confirmation once he receives um, their login details. Laurie, sorry I couldn't get in the room earlier. Will this session be recorded and posted? Yes, Laurie. It's already been recorded. It will be posted on YouTube probably um, by Monday or Tuesday latest. Naveen, is there someone I can contact to understand the internship and advanced course? Yes, for the internship you can contact Augustine on Urban Forex. Advanced course you can contact Samira at info at forexwatchers.com. They're both also available on Urban Forex. Dennis, one question please. Uh, why do you trade on many pairs instead of one pair with more money? Because of uh, it, okay, it's like this. Your eggs in one basket theory. Never place all of your eggs in one basket. Same, same, uh, same concept applies. Your risk also goes down. Also, if you're long in all of your pairs, for example, today, we traded all of these pairs. Some pairs are still negative, 
but we're still in profit. That's your biggest example why we do this. Okay, Marvin, you're welcome. Rod, you're wel welcome. Um, there's a cool way to get TP area draw this with one. Okay. Pairs internship still thirty dollars. Paula, in fact, the internship is even cheaper. Uh, we made uh, the basic internship forty five dollars. It's a three month program. So it's less than thirty dollars per month. Okay, Naveen, do you draw fib on daily chart or on one hour chart? Um, I draw it on the daily chart and also on the one hour chart if needed. Okay. Yes, even I have to go, Martin. It was nice talking to all of you guys. If there's any further questions, do email me. I hope you guys enjoyed the webinar. It is 10:21 p.m. my time and 10:21 uh, sorry 9:21 a.m. New York City time. Hope you guys all had an awesome awesome time at the webinar and wish you guys lots of pips. Enjoy your evening and uh, see you guys next week. Have a good weekend. Alright, good morning guys. Uh, can everyone uh, hear me and see my screen? Yes, yes, good. Okay, so how did everyone do um, from uh, the webinar on Friday that we had in the evening from the NFP? And how many of you guys are still in the trade? Let me ask you this, how many of you guys actually traded that, that day? Close it on Friday, okay. Close for 150, okay. Uh, I didn't trade, okay. All right. All right, so let's take a look. What do we have today? Okay, the market direction as per the forecast is uh, still the same today. Let me um, log in to Forex Watchers real quick. Most daily candles are trend continuation for a short. Um, it's because Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar is still indicating it had a long from uh, Friday. And as per today, all of our forecasts are indicating there's more support than there is resistance. Okay, this is the reason why we are seeing a long. Okay, not to mention, I'm going to show you guys one trick also, one uh, which is one of the traders, uh, well, actually one of the members actually taught me. Um, and I'll, I'll go over that in one second. Let me just load up the forecast for today. Well, basically, most of our charts are still indicating uh, a long for today. And uh, if we take a look at EURUSD, couple things first. This is a little trick uh, that uh, one of the members actually had taught me um, a long time ago. Um, basically, whenever you have a gap between the close of Friday and the open on Monday, the gap usually gets filled up. Okay, As of right now, the gap hasn't been filled. Okay, We're still looking for a long to fill up this gap. Okay, So the market's still expected to go long as of right now. Based on this basic theory, um, and uh, this theory has been tested in the past, so it usually works out. Uh, if we take a look at pound, no gap here. Take a look at US dollar CAD. There is a gap here from here to here, which has been filled already. Take a look at this. It's already been filled. It's gone up. It's touched that area. And now it can go whichever way it wants to go. Swiss franc also has a gap. The gap is to go short. And it's on its way down. Aussie dollar, nothing there. New Zealand dollar, nothing there. Euro yen also has a gap, but it has been filled immediately. Okay, and uh, gold obviously our expectation was for a long um, from Friday right at this candle, and it's gone massively long since, and it's still headed long. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to leave these trades open for today. And uh, 
we're gonna see how this fills up the gaps and stuff. Trades are running at uh, 60 pips from uh, uh, basically uh, Friday Friday uh, Friday evening uh, when I took these trades at approximately uh, 8:30 a.m. New York City time and uh, 9:30 p.m. my time. So um, the forecasts are still for a long. I don't know if this loaded up yet. No, it did not. The forecasts are for a long. We have Swiss franc as a uh, a hedge today. Swiss franc is also showing a long for some reason, um, but everything else is perfectly fine in correlation. So, a um, couple of things. Which pairs are our trigger pairs today? We should have two trigger pairs today. Okay, markets are starting to move, standing at uh, eighty-two pips. Euro USD and New Zealand dollar. Yes. Okay. Euro USD is a uh, trigger pair for a buy, and uh, New Zealand dollar is also a trigger pair for a buy. And uh, New Zealand dollar trigger pair is somewhere around this area, and which has already been crossed. It's it's looking like it's headed. It's, it wants to head long. So things are looking good for now. Go ahead and uh, stand by. And we'll continue at the top of the next hour. It is 4.18 p.m. my time. We'll meet again in 42 minutes and we'll take it from there. Any questions so far? All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, it is now Monday, 9.44 p.m. It's uh, pretty much the same time now. It is pretty much 8.44 a.m. New York City time. Um, so it's been exactly one business day now. Uh, Friday, we had uh, taken some trades on the NFP. We had gone long uh, based on what we had decided in the conference room. Today, uh, I went through a little bit with the Forex Watchers conference room, and we decided that we're going to continue long based on uh, what we saw in the markets, and now we have the trades running, actually, are prospering now. They're running in approximately 203 pips of profit right now. Um, some of you guys asked questions about gold, and gold is uh, here right now. It's heavily long from uh, where you guys had requested it. Okay, this is where we had entered around here. If, if this is where you would have entered from uh, the NFP date when I said uh, the market's going to be long, and this is where it stands currently right now at 1715. So I um, hope you guys enjoy the webinar, and uh, please, uh, if you're not a member of, of UrbanForex.com community, please do join it. It is free to join, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next webinar. Thanks, and take care.